this is Captain Chaudhary. Today I'm going to speak about the NOx gases. As you know, NX6 deals with air. There are different ways of you know preventing these pollutions, but there is a very special way of preventing the NOx pollution, and that is by you know certification and survey procedures. As we know, this NOx technical code deals with marine diesel engines, and these regulations apply to uh, a diesel engine whose power output is more than 130 kilowatt except for uh, those ships which are involved in search and rescue or emergency operations whereby the engine power is not material as i told you this is done by uh, survey and certification process which eventually leads to the issue of engine international air pollution prevention certificate so in case of marine diesel engine, there is demonstration of in-service compliance using the regulations from NOx technical code, MARPOL and relevant MEPC regulations. So different levels or different tiers of emission uh, limits are permitted to different ships depending on the date of construction. The first tier ship which are constructed on or after 1st January 2000, you know, a limit between 17 and 9.8 gram per kilowatt hour. This is the limit permitted for tier 1. Tier 2 ships which are constructed on or after 1st January 2011, a limit between 7.7 .7 and 14.4 gram per kilowatt hour is a limit that is permitted to this. Ship. So this is called second tier transmission, uh, second tier emission uh, limit. Tier 3 ships which are constructed on or after 1st January 2016, a limit between 3.4 and 2 gram kilowatt hour is the limit that is permitted. It is called Tier 3 limit. Tier 3 limits which I just said between 3.4 and 2 is applicable to the uh, specified ships which operate within the ACAS. ACAS which are constructed, ACAS which are established for NOx. The Tier 3 NOx standard applies to the ships constructed after 1st January 2016 and operating in US and US Caribbean acres or 1st January 21 and operating in the Baltic and North Sea acres. So next uh, uh, what I want to talk about is how do we determine the emission value. So in case of tier 2 and tier 3 engines like those engines which are complying with the tier 2 and tier 3 limits you know the procedure of finding out the emission value is given in Knox Technical Code 2008. Most tier 1 engines certify to the earlier 1997 version of the Knox Technical Code would still remain valid over the service life of such engines. There are various methods given in uh, Knox Technical Code in respect of measurement of emission or compliance, testing the compliance. So. Uh, Engine manufacturer, the ship builder or the ship owner can choose a method which is appropriate for a particular case. The first method is test bed testing method. Test bed test method is uh, for pre-certification survey and this is explained in chapter 5 of Knox Technical Code. The second method is once again given in chapter 5. This is onboard testing for an engine which is not pre-certified. So uh, this is tested for combined pre-certification and initial verification, right? So uh, this method, once again, as I said, is described in Chapter 5 of Knox Technical Code. Now, third method is one of the most popular one. In fact, most used method uh, to check the compliance, to check, to confirm the compliance. This is called onboard engine parameter check method. Now, in this, what happens is you use the data from technical file, data in respect of say uh, uh, the component data, engine setting and engine performance data. This way the confirmation of compliance is done at initial, renewal, annual as well as intermediate surveys. Now what you see is the flow charts illustrating the aspects which are checked at various survey stages. You know, And this is given in Appendix 2 of Knox Technical Code. Thus you can see figure 1 is pre-certification survey at manufacturer's facility. Figure 2 is initial survey on board a ship. Figure 3 is renewal, annual or intermediate survey on board a ship. Now this method that I was talking about, 
that is onboard engine parameter check method is described in chapter 6.2 of Knox technical code. This method can be used for pre-certified engines or engines which have undergone modification in such a way that the crucial critical component settings, data and performance etc. has been altered since the uh, engines were last surveyed. The key document in the parameter check procedure is the record book of engine parameter which is maintained to record all replacement and changes to NOx critical component setting and operating values. Onboard simplified measurement method for confirmation of compliance at renewal, annual and intermediate surveys or confirmation of pre-certified engines for initial certification surveys in accordance with 6.3 were required. Now the fifth method is onboard direct measurement and monitoring method. This is described in chapter 6.4 and this can be used to confirm the compliance at the renewal, annual and intermediate surveys. Now let us try and understand what is this substantial modification. Substantial modification in case of engines which are placed on the ships which are constructed after 1st January 2000 are the one which will exceed the emission standards which are set out in regulation 13 of NX6. Now in case of the engines which are placed on the ship constructed before 1st January 2000, the substantial modification means a modification which will increase the emission compared to a level compared to a standard that was set or established by simplified measurement method as described in chapter 6.3. This modification can be because of various reasons for example changing camshaft, fuel injection system, air system, combustion chamber configuration or timing calibration of the engine. Now it is also important to know what certificates or documents are to be maintained in respect of NOx. The record book of engine parameter. This is to be maintained when we use the method as described in 6.2 that is onboard engine parameter check method to ensure the compliance. If any adjustment or modifications are made to an engine after its pre-certification, a full record of such adjustment or modifications shall be recorded in the engine's record book of engine parameter. Now another very important document is technical file. Now, technical file has to accompany a marine diesel engine. Every marine diesel engine, the applicant is supposed to prepare this technical file and present it to the administration for approval. Now this technical file is required as per Knox technical code and the information that should be there in this technical file is provided in 2.4.1 of Knox technical code and the information is as follows. Number one, Identification of those components, settings and operating values of engine which influence its NOx emission including any NOx reducing device or system. Identification of the full range of allowable adjustment or alternatives for the components of engine. Number three is full record of relevant engine's performance including the engine's rated speed and rated power. Number four, a system of onboard NOx verification procedures to verify compliance with the NOx emission limits during onboard verification surveys in accordance with chapter six. Number five is a copy of relevant parent engine test data. Number six, if applicable, the designation and restrictions for an engine belonging to an engine family or engine group. Number seven is specifications of those spare parts components which when used in engine will result in continued compliance of the engine with the NOx emission limits and number eight is the EIAPP certificate as applicable. So that's it in this video. Thank you.